and we're live with Carol Dent. How are you going, Carol? I'm fine, thank you. Nice <laughs> to see you. Yeah, so exciting to chat and get to know all these amazing people yeah, that, yeah. That, that we talk to on Facebook all the time and um, share the stories. And you've got a very cool story. Uh, where, where are you from exactly? Your UK? UK, Northern England, yes. Northern Hence England. my accent. Lancashire. Outrageous accent. So um, we're just chatting about this chart, which is absolutely incredible um this is your weight loss since you started with the master class in early february you did yeah. data driven fasting and then data driven fasting again and you're jumping into the master class again which we're just kicking off another yeah. round seventh time and um I, yeah we just wanted to share all your tips and wisdom for absolutely nailing this over this year which you've you've lost 43 pounds, 20% of your body weight since February. And that linear line is like textbook. It's just <laughs> astounding. So even you're a standard by that, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed at the linearity of it. I mean, obviously, there are ups and downs. Um, you know, if, if you zoom in, it looks quite variable. But it's when you've got, um, when you do 100 days of it, it becomes linear. And you can see yeah. how effective the program is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and as I was saying before, is give your body nutrients, give your body what it needs. You know, everything else works itself out. And as you lose yourself in chasing the nutrients and the blood sugar, it's hard to overeat fats and carbs and nutrient poor stuff. So your body just did. Did you find it difficult to? To lose weight, was there any moments of extreme hunger, or you just you know... no, oh. no? I know it works. That's I know I, I've actually been uh, eating nutrient dense food since 2016. Mm. It's just that I eat the things on top of it sometimes, <laughs> which is why I put on all the weight. <laughs> it was the wine that did it last year. I had a lockdown. Oh. Uh, uh, alcoholic crisis, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people. I might... ended up at um, 225 pounds. Yeah, a lot of people might have overdone the alcohol during lockdown. Um, got some photos which you sent me. That, that's you back in 2015, and that's you now. Just... Well, I'm not. I'm not now that. No, that's 2016. This was the uh, first time I, I found you in 2016, March. Yeah. So that's the middle one. Having yeah. done uh, keto and bulletproof coffees and all the other wonderful things, Jason, Jason. Fong, fasting. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but in March, I found uh, there's an echo on the line. Oh. Can you hear it? I'll turn myself down a little bit just in case. Okay. In two, I found you in March 2016 and started, as well as uh, Terry Walls, yeah. and got completely hooked on the idea of eating nutrient-dense food. So that was March to October when I lost the rest of all the weight and ended up at 133 pounds or something, wow. which was fantastic. And this was the uh, subsequent spring. That was the fateful fell race when I fell in a bog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, so, yeah, I've been right using this way for quite some time, but it's just that I sometimes, I, yeah, it doesn't always stick. It's all those things on top that you add that, uh, you know, undo yeah. your best intentions. And um, you kept on popping up on the leaderboards from data-driven fasting and then the, the optimizing nutrition. You're in right. number four on the leaderboard there. I can't believe people managed to get 100% in the... <laughs> optimal nutrient intake it's really an incredible thing and then masterclass you lost 8.1 percent and then 20 percent overall since february so um what, what what's your background you're uh you've got an interesting story in terms of you know research and and your why of how you got to the point that you said i want to be consistent to lose this much weight T tell us about carol ah well i trained as a research scientist and uh, then went to work for the research councils, which are the UK equivalent to the CSIRO, which you must know. 
Yep. Um, and then I worked for universities. So I spent all my life working with academics in one way or another, reading about things, helping with research projects, writing proposals, writing articles, whatever. Um, but being promoted out of my to my level of incompetence. No, that's okay. <laughs> I got very miserable, which is why I took early retirement and went off sailing for five years, which was fabulous. But the sailing really did for me. I mean, it was fantastic, but I put on loads of weight. Yeah, uh, It's all those anchorages and bottles of wine with adjacent boats and socialising. <laughs> Go enjoy <laughs> yourself. Hey. Weight. <laughs> So when I came back in, in 2015, I was, as, as you saw in that last picture, really um, overweight. So then I lost it the first time, and then I succumbed to the alcohol again last year. <laughs> so I'm losing it a second time now, using <laughs> your wonderful system. Yeah. <laughs> I just know that if I eat nutrient-dense food, then I can't, and I want, um, then I lose weight. And if I cut out, you know, bread and, and starchy carbs and all yeah. the other bits, uh, no problems. Yeah, uh, and Easy it happens. Food. It happens. And you've yeah. obviously done the research into reading Terry Wells and all my blog posts over the last five years. And, yes, um, yes. Uh, yeah. And believe it, which is really nice to see people like yourself who have, you know, you don't believe too much junk. Um, although, you know, <laughs> the, there's a lot of information out there to decipher through but um and you did research into into chronobiology which i want to get into a little bit more later which is completely fascinating that that that, that's very interesting not um it was the time i did it we didn't have the label chronobiology was the label was only really put on it in the 90s i think whereas my phd was in the early 70s in the 70s so um we were just looking at hormonal control of reproduction, seasonal changes, why animals yeah. switch things on and switch things off, which was yeah. my at the time. Yeah. And, and, and you I, I think recently on. because um, the, the field has gone mad, chronobiology, you know, about everything, you know, about sleep, eating. Yeah. yeah and I, I'm, I'm uh, fascinated by it. So, uh, yeah, me too. I do and need you've made at, at animals and and research into animals, he obviously a, a dog lover in a big way, and and run with your dogs and. I am, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm fascinated by um, the don't eat for winter concept and just the way we we tend to respond to different foods with different dopamine mm -hmm. responses, and you know the, these foods that we're constantly presented with now in, in, in modern agriculture where we can create fat and carb combos with low protein and all these artificial flavors and colors to send our dopamine into overdrive in a like a a circ annual, a circ annual pattern that you know mm. we're just stuck in this constant autumn with these foods that are very unique in nature and just drives us to overeat they're very yummy and we love them and but they're always here and always around and always cheap and always marketed to us and it's hard not to eat them basically definitely i think it's fascinating i've not i'm not sure i know you've talked about it but i'm not sure to what extent people have looked at annual clocks in people yeah. as opposed to animals yeah. yeah i mean there's a lot of work being done on daily clocks yep sleep and food um and how much does eating drive the clock or does the clock mm. drive and what does that yeah. mean for the yeah um, it's a question in my mind. Yeah, it'll be fascinating to see what gets unpacked in the future. I think, like you said, a lot of people are looking at the daily cycle and sleep and the importance mm -hmm. of syncing your biorhythms and sleeping and eating with, um, you know, melatonin and the, the daily cycle. But the annual cycle is also yeah. fascinating because, you know, we, we would have naturally gone in a cycle from basically, you know, protein spring modified fast in spring with protein and, and fiber and then lots of carbs in summer and then fat and carbs in autumn and then basically keto low carb in winter and just had to keep on cycling with that so you know basically what we're doing in the 
in the fat loss phase with DDF and the master class is pushing you into that spring sort of phase where you've got nutrient density without a whole lot of energy and you sort mm. of shift it into weight and then hopefully you can get on with a maintenance phase that isn't as restrictive at the same time. So yeah, it'll be interesting yeah. to see how you transition into a more maintenance phase after you land where you want to be. Do you want to keep on losing weight during the next masterclass? Or? Oh, yes. I'm halfway to my goal. Oh, I, wow. I reached the halfway point last week. So, yeah, I want to get to 140 pounds. Wow. So 181 this morning. So, um, yeah. So you want to lose 40% of your body weight? Yes. Get back down to that nice running weight. Yeah. Oh, that, that would be cool. We'll have to chat again when that happens. Um, yeah, it would be great. Yeah. yeah. Just to go back to your uh, thing about seasonality, I've, I've often wondered, I mean, we put weight on in the autumn, but the idea, I suppose, well, not the idea, but in our ancestral way, we'd have probably not eaten very much. You know, we'd have eaten our reserves, wouldn't we, over winter, because there was, apart from animals, because the rest would be in store. Mm. I'm just thinking yeah. the light affects our activity and our on the food we could have and our regional food and local food. So local food is really the way to be, isn't it? Eat according to the yeah. what you can get locally. What's available right now. What's available, yeah. Grown naturally and, and recently in touch with the earth, whether that's um, animals or, or plant-based food. But if it's um, recently connected to the earth in an ideally nutrient-dense, regenerative mm. ecosystem, that, uh, that that's my ultimate passion is that nutrient density will promote agriculture that is better for the earth and better for the world. Um, but that's a, that's a big topic and um, yeah. probably have no time for yeah. all of that. But um, <laughs> in terms of um, your daily biology, this is your data-driven fasting yeah. hour chart. What did, what did you learn from that? You've drawn little trend lines through it and, and how did you change your eating based on the reflections on, on that? Ah, right. Yes. Well, my I'm, I'm unusual, I think, in that I don't get um, – a morning increase in my glucose. In fact, after mm. I've got up, you can see that the the waking glucose in purple is slightly higher than the glucose I have about half an hour to an hour after I've got up. Yep. I have a I have a plunge then, sometimes quite low. It's been down as low as three point three. Wow. Um, I definitely need breakfast. But yep. interestingly, my body copes very well with breakfast. So if you look at yeah. the post meal readings, my body copes really well with breakfast and it doesn't peak too much. And then lunch, in fact, this is slightly distorted because, of course, when DDF, as DDF carries on, you're trigger, you gradually drop, don't you? So you mm. only log the lower things. But there was a trend mm. upwards earlier that I, my blood glucose gradually rises during the day, the lower it go. And then I, I have a higher peak when I eat. So what that meant for me was I brought forward all my eating. So I always eat breakfast now and I always eat lunch or a late lunch, but I very rarely eat after that. I sort of eat mid-afternoon and I don't eat in the evening, which is probably why my waking glucose has been going down. Yeah. Yeah, we've got I've another I've been chart, on two but... meals a day um, as a result of that. You've had a nice downtrend in your waking yeah. glucose, which is really healthy. Yeah, but this sort of data is really fascinating. You don't need to wear a CGM to understand your daily trends. You just yeah. use that little bit of data from your pre-meal and a few post-meal. A lot of people find that their the blood sugars rise a lot after dinner. It just means that they're eating way too much at night mm -hmm. and overdoing it and probably need to cut back on dinner and move that first meal to earlier in the day. And it's a common trend. Some people find it the other way, but um, usually um, we just seem to do better with especially more protein, more nutrient density, and then you can eat more regularly rather than having to fast for days on end. And all these people go, oh, wow, I can eat, eat multiple meals a day rather than fasting for seven days and getting no results. So that, that's that's really yeah. exciting for me. I read uh, the summary. I I read a summary of an interesting paper, actually, which was published last month in a, yeah. in a conference on endocrinology, which um, it was only correlative rather than causative, but it was showing that people who ate before 8.30 generally had a better metabolic yeah. state. 
Um, yeah. And in fact, it didn't matter. Eight thirty in the morning. Eight thirty in the morning. Yeah. So if you eat breakfast before eight thirty, you you have a better blood sugar control than eating later. And also, um, it didn't matter what time you ate later. You still had better blood sugars if you ate before eight wow. thirty. There's this, but it was correlatives. Because you know they were looking at what yeah. time people ate. So not an uh, not a top class study, but it was interesting. Yeah, that that's really fascinating. Definitely to get definitely an area for more research, and mm. we definitely with CDF encourage people when they first feel hungry. If their blood sugars are high and they're really hungry, then earlier in the day, a higher protein focused meal um, will help the blood sugars drop, and then they can eat again, and and things tend to work out. And the satiety is a whole lot better if you can prioritize protein at your first meal. Doesn't necessarily have to be at at seven o'clock in the morning like you have i don't think <laughs> um, but but definitely pulling that last meal back to see you hungrier in the morning um did you want to have a look at some of your uh some of your meals we'll get to the 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 um right. micronutrient chart later but you know, these right. are some amazing looking meals they look really healthy carol yeah well this is one of my go-to's which is a salad um with various toppings but uh, watercress as the base rocket coriander um onion tomato peppers um what else well anything i can think of that i put on there <laughs> grouted seeds some uh, hemp seeds and sesame seeds and uh, sunflower seeds occasionally on that one um yeah and then some meat on top so that tends to be my lunch so here, there was a uh, one with the you just flipped the next one. So here's part yeah. of a salad like that, but with seafood. I love seafood of various sorts. So oysters for the zinc. Yep. And crab, which is really nutrient dense and not very many calories. So this one has yeah. crab, prawns, anchovies, wow. and octopus. I think with one wow. of my I call them superfood salads. It's sort of a all full of different colors although they get slightly covered up there by all the seeds yeah <laughs> you must have but developed it... an interesting palate sailing around the world getting to eat all this amazing seafood at different ports yeah. yes i love it going to greek um fish markets was one of the highlights of the trip wow. trying out all these different fish that we weren't familiar with but i'm, I'm a curious person i love uh, eating you know different new foods so I'm going to, in the next yeah. masterclass, have a little go at rivaling CD on the unusual food steaks. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, CD. In fact, I've got some uh, pork pig trotters organi um, ordered for Tuesday. So that's my first <laughs> foray into the CD realm of eating. <laughs> I, I can out-weird you. But, um, yeah, I suppose at the same time you don't need to be completely weird. Um, no, and, and no, no. Pure, but, but it's fun to test new foods and try new foods and you might like that food that's actually good for you and then you can drop the other foods that aren't so Absolutely. good did you find did you find you you sort of settled on a selection of foods that you knew worked for you all the time like that optimal 30 30 that we talked about um i have a core amount of uh, foods but um i like experimenting so i wouldn't want to eat the same 30 all the time yep in fact if you just go back to the last slide that's one of my core foods is the top right, which is pork tenderloin, which I discovered through the masterclass, bizarrely. I've been yeah. avoiding pork, thinking it was fatty, but then I discovered that pork tenderloin is much more nutrient-dense mm. than virtually any other um, meat. So I eat a lot of it now, and it's um, really yeah. nice. And this is one of your recipes, I think. It's pork <laughs> tenderloin with, um, with peppers and cumin and sort of like a stew and mashed cauliflower and green beans and asparagus that's a real common one for me which is mashed cauliflower so yep. a good base and coriander leaves and green beans mm. and asparagus. lovely and those yeah, are so much, ones, so so much really vitamin c in the cauliflower yeah it's um it's really nice and you get um, your frittatas and omelets yeah i cook frittatas slightly differently than um than you do in the book in that i i cook it on the stove and then stick it under the grill so you get this nice 
puffed up brown version of it. Um, and yeah, this was the stage of doing it. I, this is very common for me, which is I'll take a whole variety of veg, whatever I've got in the fridge and, and cook them down and then either add egg, this one's eggs, this is a shakshuka, eggs and feta on top of it, or make it into a frittata or do something like that. But I get lots of nutrient dense veggies that way. Yeah. I love how like there's all these arguments about, you know, plant based versus carnivore or this, that or the other, some named diet, but once you just focus on getting nutrients from your food, it just looks amazing. Whatever you want to call it, it's just yeah. it works. The photos tell the whole story. Yeah. Did you yeah. want to tell us anything about this one? Uh, no, I do. I do eat quite a few eggs with, you know, scrambled or omelets or poached. This is poached eggs on smoked haddock with the wonderful vitamin D enhanced mushrooms. I put those in. <laughs> I, I ate so many of them in the last masterclass. I've hardly eaten any since. I've just bought <laughs> some last week, so uh, I'm back on the mushrooms. Yeah. I that's, just, that's I just cool. ate too many. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you probably got enough of all the nutrients in the mushrooms and ready to move on. Um, yeah. So this is this is your daily chronometer logging. Your um, most people like we talked about in the live this morning. Most people get most of the benefit from working out how to get their protein bar and chronometer longer than yeah. the energy bar. Basically, getting enough protein without too much energy, and then nutrient density is so correlated with protein that. 80% of the way there if you can just get enough protein without excess energy by dialing back the, the fat yeah. in the car. So, yeah, you're up at about you know 45% protein, which seems to be where the optimal sweet spot is in terms of nutrient yeah. density. And uh, you're pretty much home and hose from there and everything is just fine-tuning and tweaking. Yes. Yes, I put, I put these in... Um... I think there was another one which is earlier, which is all about planning. How, how I do it is to put all the protein in first. That was there was another picture somewhere. Oh yeah, I don't have that one here, but yeah. Oh, okay. So set up yeah. your protein for the day and then build your veggies That's around. A, yeah. yeah, and plan ahead. That was a, a definite tip for newbies. Don't just yeah. eat a meal and then just see what else you can do to balance it. Do the whole day, and it, I would love to have another day so that you can do a tomorrow one. You know, so plan two days. And you, you can plan two days in chronometer, but you can't yeah. check the nutrient density of the second day without transposing yeah. it into the into today, which is a bit of a yeah. I have been known to do that, well, frequently. <laughs> it takes Pro time. Tips for, for yeah. nailing the leaderboard. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we've got, these are the, the nutrients that Nutrient Optimizer said you needed to focus on vitamin B12, P3, yeah. vitamin B, vitamin E. That was e, from that particular day that I highlighted. Yeah. It was just to yeah. show the process of, of putting in the protein and then dialing in the other foods and then just checking using the Today button to see what's mm. missing and then going back and tweaking. Yes. So that, <laughs> that was, with that, I didn't check it at all. I just put the food in and it came to 96. So it shows how easy it is once you've got the idea of what sort of foods are nutrient dense. Mm. I can get above 90 virtually every day without even fiddling, which is what yeah. I'm aiming for at the moment. Yeah. Um, it's just putting all the foods that I like that I know are nutrient dense from, you know, the last masterclass. And yeah. um, well, even at the beginning of the last masterclass, I was up in the high 80s because I'd already. Mm -hmm followed all your work and looked at those I love those wonderful <laughs> scatter charts that you have you know the ones with the nutrient yep. dense vegetables up to the yep. uh, I've just realized that the, I'm backwards in this picture so I'm going up to the right and my hand's going up to the left <laughs> <laughs> technology is on the wrong side yeah <laughs> sorry I'll have to go to the left um, yeah that, that way yeah I love the charts <laughs> I tended to use those a lot before I discovered, you know, you know the app. I'll pick yeah. out all the things at the top right on your nutrient dense charts and, and eat them. <laughs> but I found as soon as I got <laughs> into, um, into, the, into chronometer, the score was up in the high 80s, low 90s, right from week one. Just by yeah. cutting out the booze and the, and the other things I was eating on top of the nutrient dense food. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we'll get to that in a sec. And and this is yeah. your 
um, fingerprint, which is just impressive that, you know, obviously you've, you've learnt a bit, it's been in your head and then you've actually yeah. put it into practice and it's worked in your life, which is absolutely fantastic. So, um, yeah, so what did you have to cut out? What are the foods that you uh, – wine do you, do you miss the wine or do you have a little bit occasionally or you just know that it doesn't help you or um i don't have a very good off button on wine <laughs> so i will i haven't had any till i i actually had a glass of wine to celebrate getting halfway to my goal but i found i drank half yep. the bottle you know i was going to have a glass <laughs> and then i just went half the bottle and i thought this is stupid yes i'm uh so I've got to be a bit careful. I'm, Do you I find will... that you, can, you choose poorly after you have the wine as well? Yeah. You know, a little bit? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'll just go and eat I anything. The, yeah, I think that's like the biggest problem. The with, biggest problem with alcohol to an extent is that it's not the alcohol itself and alcohol can actually be satiating and, you know, because it's a high oxidative priority fuel, you have to burn it off and in some ways it shuts down your appetite but at the same time it just leaves you going yeah i can eat anything now and it doesn't matter i'm relaxed and all those sort of cognitive barriers that make yeah. you choose better foods fall away and then everything else is free game the only positive thing is that i've got nothing in the fridge that is not good for me at the moment so you know i have yeah. half a bottle of wine on uh when was it thursday i think i am um, I looked in the fridge. There was nothing, that, <laughs> nothing, <laughs> carby, uh, kryptonite in the fridge. So uh, it was like, oh, I've got to have some scallops and prawns. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm not hungry anymore. And uh, yeah, that yeah, that's a yeah. that's a big tip. A is to plan ahead. B is not to have foods in the cupboard mm. that you know you're gonna when you get to that point and craving things you're gonna choose poorly. So what else did you have to cut out that you oh, used to eat that you don't eat as much now? The thing that I miss the most is bread, without a doubt. I love bread, the particularly, you know, nice, uh, nutty, organic, whole meal with seeds type of bread. Yep. Um, I, I'm not sure. I find that if I've got that in the house, I munch it. You know, buttered toast is an absolute delight. Oh, yeah. So that's Fat the thing I really miss. Together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've not eaten any pasta, but I don't miss that. Um, I've not eaten any potatoes. I will probably have some. I'm going to try out potatoes during this masterclass because the new potatoes are just coming into season here. Okay. Spring. Uh, I just want to see how where, how they fit in the nutrient optimization and how they affect my blood sugar. Yeah. But I'm You're not probably at a point if you're doing a lot of running that the carbs wouldn't have a massive negative effect on your blood sugar for a long time especially if you're really active and, and running but um yeah. Well, yeah, I'm doing walking. Much better. yeah i'm walking about eight between eight and ten miles a day so um wow. i feel i need something a bit more than the calories that no allows me there are mm. some days when i'm really hungry yeah so um i'm that's why I'm going to try just upping the carbs a bit. Yeah. What effect that has, and whether it slows yeah. my weight down or not. The only two days I've tried it, I actually my blood sugars were lower the day after rather than yeah. higher. Yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating, so isn't it? I'm just going to experiment a bit. Maybe my body is okay with carbs, because even yeah. when I was at 225 pounds, my my waking blood sugar was still below five. So wow. um, you've never been diabetic at all, really. You've just no. been obese. Yes, I'm one of these people with a very high personal fat, fat threshold. I think, which which <laughs> is a blessing and a curse. It means you're yeah. not going to get metabolically, you're not going to have a heart attack or a stroke in a, in a moment, but you just can gain a lot of weight very easily. And um, yeah, but it comes off if you dial it in. Um, yeah. Michael asked, were there any strange or hard to get foods that were harder to get or find have you got any stories i suppose you've been all over the world chasing down amazing different foods <laughs> and experimenting and you're not afraid to try new things at all no no i love food i'm a, I'm a bit of a fooder holic <laughs> i like i like um 
I mean, one of the things I love doing is taking my favorite chef's recipe books and then seeing if I can adapt them for um, for uh, nutrient optimization. Yeah. I mean, a lot of them have really good nutrient profiles anyway, but too much fat, basically. Yeah. A lot of um, maybe too much carbs, but most of the chefs I like are quite plenty and meaty and foraging. Mm. Mm. Um, so um, usually the recipes are really nice for what we're doing here. But I just mm. have to dial back the extra virgin olive oil in them and things like that and add more herbs and lemon. But it's fun and making still, recipes work. And you still find it tastes okay? You enjoy the taste oh, yeah. of the food? Well, it's the quality. The certainly herbs and spices make a huge difference. Yeah. You know, they add that lovely taste to the food. Yeah. And also, uh, they're quite nutrient dense. Aren't sorry, John. They're nutrient dense. I know you don't have much of them, but they do add. Mm. You know, yeah, coriander, and you get... parsley, and thyme are all pretty high on the nutrient density. Mm. Once you get fresh ingredients that are, you know, full of nutrients, they, they taste amazing as well. So they're so much more satisfying. You don't need to add all the extra energy from the fat and carbs necessarily. It's much more mm -hmm. satisfying when you find these foods that look and taste and feel amazing because they're actually good for you and they contain the nutrients you need. Yeah. I'm trying to think what I found. In terms of nutrients I found hard to get, my vitamin D was always a problem. Um, but I do spend yep. a lot of time outside, so I'm not worried too much mm. about it. But getting vitamin D from food mm. is, other than the vitamin D, salmon and trout and mackerel have vitamin D, I think. Is that right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, any uh, fatty fish, basically. Yeah. Um, so I could I eat to my score up to 100% for women um, through that means, but it was... It's always a bit of a trial in mushrooms. <laughs> I think uh, that's one thing that um, I'm going to. Uh, I, I did. I do take a vitamin D supplement in winter because it's yeah. the effort of eating that many mushrooms is. Um, no, I'm not going to do it. I'm taking that. That's the only supplement. Well, in fact, I've stopped taking it now. We're into vitamin D generate sun. You know, the sun sign off in the sky now in the UK to for me to get vitamin D outside. So I think that with the food. Is going to be enough for the summer. Yeah, and you're uh, getting out and being active in the sun. Yeah, and I spend a lot of time outdoors anyway, so it should be okay. Uh, calcium is always difficult for me as well. I don't mm. know, I'm not quite sure why, but I was low on calcium. Yeah, it's, it's harder when you cut out the dairy to find the calcium, mm. often the rhubarb or some other um, particular veggie helps a little bit there. Um, so, um, what are your non-scale victories other than your weight that you found you, you had success on that you're enjoying now? Well, the um, the main thing is the walking, I think. Because, as I said, back in why I sort of lost motivation was that I damaged my knee uh, in that in the fateful fell race, as I call it. Mm -hmm. um, I tore all the ligaments and. Subsequently, my knee developed acute osteoarthritis, and I was in agony. And I couldn't even walk up the stairs without, you know, sort of pulling myself up on the banister or sleep because of the pain in my knees. Mm -hmm. But since I've been eating nutrient dense food and losing weight, I've got no pain at all, which is wow. just. Wonderful. I mean, the pain. I've been doing physio on it, so the pain was diminishing, but it made a huge leap with eating all this nutrient dense food. I must have reduced inflammation in my osteoarthritic knees. So um, now I'm climbing hills again and you know, doing 14 mile walks and tweetling about. Great. Yeah. So it's you dog, your dogs must be loving it. They are. They are. Yeah. So that's the major non scale victory. Um, I'm not getting so much. I, I used to get really bad ray nodes in my hand and I'm, that's gone as well. So I'm not sure what that, how that relates to nutrient density, but um, clearly it does in some way. <laughs> there's maybe there's a whole lot of things we don't understand about our body that uh, yeah. the interaction of nutrients and whole food that contains them all that we try to 
band-aid the the symptoms with drugs or take supplements to try and mimic whole food but you know the foods that you're getting that you're showing in those photos are just so full of life and locally grown and alive that they're giving your body what it needs yes definitely and we have a fabulous little organic um, green grocers who they grow everything in their greenhouses and they're trying oh, to wow. um, grow all these unusual and exotic things in north yorkshire Cool. I'm on the Lancashire Yorkshire border. They're fantastic. So I go and do all greens shopping there. It's just three miles away, five miles away. Maybe. And you can walk. Well, cycle probably. I'm going to get oh, my cool. Yeah. That's great. I'm a big fan of active transport and people getting out and walking and mm. cycling more. It's just a great way. We all get stuck in our lounge chairs, moving from door to door. And um, yeah. It's a great way to actually get out and be active when you're moving around. And what about your mental state? You mentioned that you had a lot more happiness rather than a lot of people find that the depression lifts as well as they yes. improve the, the, the nutrition. I feel um, so much better because I was I was getting really – well, last year was a blur. I can't really remember much about last year. Well, I remember drinking a lot. But um, I think I, I was in a pretty black hole. and. Uh, mm. Definitely. Well, it started with um, I, I suddenly got my motivation back. Now, and this is a funny, it sounds a bit bizarre, but watching the Vendee Globe, which is a round the world yacht race, oh, I'm right. an ex sailor. And there, there were two skippers on there. In fact, the, the picture I sent you of my Y, which is that poster picture, has them on the bottom. One is, um, you've got it. This one here. Uh, yeah, these guys one, here. Yeah, these guys here. That he's called Jean Le Cam, and he's in. He's sixty three, and he was going around on a round the world yacht race and climbing masts and diving in. And I thought, and that's Pip Hare. She took the oldest boat in the fleet, and she was fantastically very determined and motivated. And I was just thought, well, if they can do it, what am I doing? What am I doing? Sitting in my chair, bemoaning life and thinking I'm getting old. old. So this was, yes, you can. You can do it. Um, so this is my little thing, to mot my motivational poster. Um, and also my why. I think finding your why is so crucial. It's mm. one of the little tips I'd have for new people is really work on it until your why makes you cry. <laughs> I would <was> say. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what do you mean by that? Just feel it deeply and, and know it you feel and it internalize really it. really deeply that this is really what's so important to you. So health and vitality. Um, I'm very into adventures, as you probably guessed from some of the things I've talked about when all of them. So this one, which is life, I'm trying to read it now. Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all. You know, that was like, <sighs> and if I'm fat and overweight and with, wrecked knees i'm not going to feel like that yeah. and i suddenly went this is stupid these two people little do they know how much they motivated me to say sod this i'm i, I'm, I may be 66 but there's a lot of life in me yet you know <laughs> i love it I love um it. and these are pictures from when i was slim last time out with the dogs on the hills so they all remind me of climbing mountains in the lake district that one's on top of I don't know which mountain it was now. Um, this was, I've got loads of clothes in the cupboard that I had when I was slim. And this was my posh frock. <laughs> I want to wear my posh frocks again. <laughs> so joy, joy is definitely, um, uh, I've realized that you can't see my pointer. I'm doing it with my pointer and I realize that you can't see it. But <laughs> the top right is my posh frog. And then choose yes. joy. I feel so joyful. Now I'm losing weight and feel that I'm going to get back to this person that I was. This person wow. who's out on the fells. Yeah. Well, I forgot. I can't actually read that. Be, but yeah. The, um, be, be fearless in the pursuit of what sets your soul on so fire. Long like That's that. right. Yeah. So um, yeah. I'm fearless in pursuit of, of nutrient optimization at the moment to try and get to the That's point true. where I can do all these things that I used to do, which might include sailing again. I don't know. But I, I, 
I haven't thought about it. Certainly walking. I want some yeah. new adventures. Yeah. You're not willing to lie down and get old and, and fade away, no. are you, Carol? I love it. No, I'm not. It. No, I want to be climbing mountains in my 80s. I have three older brothers. And they are climbing mountains. And they're, well, my oldest one, my oldest brother is 85 and he's climbing mountains in his age. So um, can't be outdone by my brothers. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Good. I love the attitude. Um, Michael also asked, um, what's been the response from your friends and family? Are, are they tagging along? Are they interested in saying, what are you doing? And can I have some? Well, it, yeah, yeah. My, uh, um, in fact, Another part of my inspiration to do this again was that all three of my brothers have all lost weight over the last year. They've all suddenly got the urge. One of them has, yeah, he's lost about five stone and he's he's bought a, he's he's eighty and he's bought a bike and he's out cycling. Um, awesome. And then my seven, my brother who is in his early seventies is doing these hundred and fifty mile, you know, mega cycles. He cycled down to Greece. Wow sorts of things so um we're all a bit sort of bonkers adventure outdoor people uh, in a good way I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I haven't I'll, actually I'll... seen them since i've lost weight this time then i mean obviously they they were very proud of me when i lost weight last time because of lockdown we've not been able to visit each other so i've not seen them yet next week i hope because we've now been liberated <laughs> we <can laughs> all visit people yeah. It's a really important time to be healthy and active and well nourished and have a very healthy immune system and an innate immune system and and you know to fight whatever may come. Yeah, it says, uh, and also, um, what did I see? The quote, which was, um, "Covid will be beaten on the dinner plate." <laughs> <laughs> um, I like that. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember quite what the quote was, but it was something like that which is uh, if we all paid attention to our metabolic health, then there'd be far fewer, you know, we'd, we'd have a far fewer deaths from yeah. all, well, COVID. But, I mean, everything else as well. It's not just um, that, is it? Mm. Mm. That has become foremost in our mind. But, uh, yeah. Mm. I but still nobody's driving. really paying attention to it, unfortunately, but it's the mm. biggest thing you can do to change your risk. But, um, yeah. Really powerful. Um, so what other tips have you got for, for newbies who are jumping into this? We're just starting another masterclass at the moment, and lots of people are, you know, I don't know what I've got myself into, and there's a lot of information. And how do you navigate that? It's it's there's a there's a lot to learn in six weeks, but you don't have to learn it all in the first day. Well, I'm afraid I'm one of these people who does have to learn it all on the first day. <laughs> You might guess. I was like leaping in. You know, I was, oh, let's fiddle with all this nutrient optimization in the first week. So, um, but I'm probably unusual in that uh, I just go, and I'd, I'd been familiar with your work anyway. So I was aware of quite, I, once I sussed out how the app worked, it was play, you know, yeah. really experimenting. Well, planning ahead, sitting at your why, planning ahead, and it, experimenting and not being frightened is my uh, attitude but that's my attitude to most things so um yeah um if you i think if newbies are feeling confused then that's a good place to be mm. that shows you that you're mentally trying to adapt something new um so uh it's not a bad place to be to be angry or confused yeah. it's like my brain is trying to set up some new pathways of learning yeah so then you have to just go back and read and think about it and focus on protein and uh, get that green bar high and then just play it's experiment it becomes like a jigsaw puzzle you start putting things yeah. in and taking things out and uh, finding your foods that you really like and experiment with foods that you've not eaten before mm. and look at your marty's charts with mm. nutrient dense foods that's i found that really helpful you know the scatter chart that's the little satiety versus nutrient density chart that's yeah. interactive in tableau that i think that's really powerful um, yeah it's the, the secret to nutrition in in one chart pretty much absolutely yeah it's yeah. A, a, and seeing what's what's at the 
I'm going to put my hand the right way now. Top. Right. So because my my pictures reversed. You. You're ambidextrous now. Yeah. Um, yeah. See what's at the top and, and try it. Just try it. Try yeah. different ways of eating it. Look in the recipe books for nice things to eat. Yes. Yeah. I think that insight about being comfortable with being confused for a little while and not getting frustrated is really important because that's when you actually learn. That's when you mm. teach yourself something new. I mean, I have no idea why nutritional optimization isn't a thing that's more well known, but it's not. And most people haven't come across it or this way of thinking about food, but it works for so many people like yourself. Um, yeah, and yeah. It's okay if you don't understand it because it's not out there much yet. But it's in that sitting with it, and going, "Okay, yeah. how can I solve this puzzle?" And all the people who have really smashed it have just gone. I got lost in solving the puzzle of what yeah. nutrient density looks like on my plate in my location. And then they go, oh, "Well," wow. they look up from the fun puzzle that they were solving, and they're top of the leaderboard. Yeah. It's like really cool. I love it. Um. Yeah, so where to from here for, for Carol? You've got a an exciting future ahead at, at 66 and ready to conquer <laughs> the world and, and take things on. Are you going to do any more research? No. I mean, I, I, there's part of me would really like to geek out and go and do, you know, study some more, but I think I ought to go and have another adventure somewhere, but I don't know where yet. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm planning an adventure. I might go and watch, walk the Camino de Santiago, which is probably on my bucket list. I've got lots of things on my bucket list I'd really like to do, so it's just deciding what priority to give them. Yeah. Uh, but I feel yeah. revitalised and motivated to actually think about going and doing these things. I mean, last year it was just like, oh, well, let's just forget it. You know, I'm never going to walk the Santiago, Camino de Santiago, and I'm never going to go to Norway to see the Aurora. You know, I'm never going to do these things. And what what the hell? It doesn't matter. You know, I'm going to die anyway. <laughs> but now it's, well, let's just cram it all in. Let's go for it. <laughs> let's smash that bucket list. I love it. And you yeah. mentioned resistance training at, at, at 66. Yeah. What are you doing? Um, I've just started um, doing... I had a resistance training program from someone, I can't remember who now. I'm just starting to do it because I'm aware that I'm, according to Renpo, I don't know how to pronounce it, is it Renpo or Renpo? Your scales. The scales. The scales show I'm losing a lot of, not much fat percentage and loads of lean body mass. And I don't yep. know how, I, I know it's just, it's an algorithm. So I don't actually know yep. whether that's true, but even so, I mean, uh, sarcopenia at my age is a, is a key consideration. So mm. I just want to incorporate a lot more resistance training in. I used to do a lot of, um, uh, I suppose I used to have good upper, upper body strength because of what I did. I used to have horses as well as dogs. So, you know, throwing bales around and helping in the farm and things like that, you know, you uh, you keep your body strength up. But I haven't done much recently, so I'm aware how my Lower body strength is not too bad with all the walking. Yeah. But my upper body strength is definitely gone. So I just need to get back onto it. Yeah. It's an investment that you're making, a strength that you get to keep later on because it will decrease. And as you lose weight, often it is the lean mass that drops as well. So you want to maximize the fat loss and minimize the muscle loss. And you're, uh, yeah. yeah. But I don't know whether Rempo is really telling me the right story because I can't believe that I've lost 20% of my body weight and only 4% of my fat. Okay. Yeah, uh, you need to – that's your fat percentage that's gone yeah. down, is it? Yeah, that sort of makes sense, but um, but you will have lost a lot of body fat. Oh, and, yeah, I know yeah, that. Which is I huge. Thought, I don't know how on earth I could ever get down to 25% without being a skeleton at this rate I'm going now. <laughs> You know, we're talking about twenty-five percent body weight. Yeah, I've only lost forty percent. I've only lost four percent so far. I've gone from maybe five percent. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I've gone from forty-three percent to thirty-eight point something percent. Wow. How can I get to twenty-five percent if I've if I've got halfway down my fat uh, weight loss? I'm just. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it, it is only an estimate, but you want to track that trend and keep an eye on it. But yeah, what you're doing with resistance training and uh, you'll, you'll be super strong granny <laughs> and you'll be smashing the world and conquering all the mountains literally and I love it. Um, yeah, yeah, so what, what, else, what else do you want to leave people with to um, wise world words from, from Carol who's, <laughs> conquered her body in 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 yeah since february i'm amazed at what you've achieved it's a real inspiration well not really i mean that the thing i put on the the chart that you put up recent the one with my y on the left hand side which is one life you just live it that's what mm. my advice would be yeah yeah that one one life just one why aren't we running on we're on fire towards our wildest dreams that's what i <laughs> Get motivated. Get sort of excited. Yeah. Live with uncertainty. Live with all the fear and doubt and um, difficulty that you don't understand things. And just go, I'm learning. That's what mm. learning feels like. That's what learning feels like in your brain when you're putting down new uh, pathways. Wow. So that's my that's takeaway. Yeah. You, you, you're doing resistance training for your brain and your body. I love it. Yeah, indeed. Yes. Yeah, that's so awesome. Thank you so much for your time. It's been fascinating to chat and um, share your journey to inspire everybody. And um, look forward to hanging out with you more in the masterclass and seeing the lives. And um, yeah, thanks for sharing what you're doing to encourage everybody else and inspire everybody else. Who <laughs> says, I'm, I'm getting old. I'm too, I'm over this. And Maybe I'll give up because it's all too hard, but um, people like you that just keep smashing it. Yes, it's been lovely. And also thank you very much for all your what you've done. You know, yeah. now we've got the app, it makes it so much easier. So me yeah. trying to guess using all the charts that I used to use from your work. <laughs> uh, now we can just put it all in. It's just great. Yeah, so and it just pops up and tells you what to eat next and what to yeah. eat we can dial in and all these people who know it and have done it before and know how to help other people do it again and they're just following the footsteps and it's just hopefully we'll continue to to grow and it's growing really quickly which is incredibly exciting to yeah. see the momentum that's gaining so yeah hopefully it'll... the app is is just a game changer isn't it because you can Instead of just guessing, well, I'll eat some of those nutrient dense foods. Oh, wrong way on the top of the chart. Um, yeah. It's like um, we can just do it with the app. Yeah. It's, it's cheating. <laughs> in a good way. Good. Yeah. Now, you know, you yeah. need to factor in some phytonutrients and some microbiome things. And yeah. I don't know that, how to that... it. There's no real uh, science. Uh, agreed science on that yet is there so um, no there's just not a lot of data but no i figure if you're getting all the micronutrients from whole food you can be getting the phytonutrients and good gut you know probiotics yeah. and prebiotics and everything else that you'll need if you're getting it from those amazing whole food meals that you were mm. showing before if you're real food everything else looks after itself but if you try to make a chemical synthetic vitamin cocktail um, you're just not going to get all those benefits yeah. that your body gets from that real food that you showed that you're thriving off. Yes, that's perhaps another takeaway, which is I, I actually believe in eating real food, not <laughs> things like protein powders. I know protein powders mm. are okay, but um, I actually like eating the real thing. Mm. Not a great fan of uh, adding you know, extra things like collagen and whey and things. Yeah. I'm sure they're okay. Yeah. It's nicer to eat the, the proper food. Yeah, yeah. Proper oh, food, as my mum would say. Eat proper food. <laughs> <laughs> you doing your mum proud. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I am. Yeah. She was a great one for eating locally. We had to eat all sorts of weird things. And we even boiled sheep's heads just like city. I remember those from my childhood. They were for the dog, not for us. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Carol. Yeah. We, um, uh, thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Have a, have a good day in Lancashire and um, really well, appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. Bye for now. <laughs>